Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life and I'm going to move my incense because it's blowing in my face. That's much better. Much, much better. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your astro tarot and intuitive forecast for the week of August 12th, 2019. I have my chart, I have my cards, I have my coffee, I have my notes, and we're ready to get started. First things first, before we even talk about this week, I need to talk about last week, just a little bit, just a little bit before we dive into the details. And the reason why this is, is because there were some major changes that happened over the weekend that I did talk about last week in my last video. So if you wanna see the details on that, then I will link it down below about Jupiter turning direct after being retrograde since April. Now, I'm not gonna share my prediction in this video because again I did that in my last video but basically what we're going to see and how I'm going to describe this is the floodgates opening up and abundance of all sorts and shapes and sizes coming flowing in I have my predictions for that that are good and bad but and then also uh, uh, Uranus went retrograde yesterday yesterday and then Mercury, the planet of communication and contract, dialogue, and things that we write and things that we hear, moved into the sign of Leo. So there's a lot of things that have been going on this weekend that are impacting the energy of this week. I'm going to be making a separate video talking about Uranus moving retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Now, Uranus has been in the sign of Taurus. When this planet moves, retrograde or direct or moves into a new sign, there's always gonna be a major shift. That's what all the planets do. As above, so below. The energy that's going on up there influences influences us down here. Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus and then going direct in the sign of Taurus is really going to kick up some crazy dust. The thing is with this, and I wanna be honest with you guys, always and forever, you guys know as a Virgo, I'm never gonna lie to you and I'm gonna keep everything thorough and detailed and I'm very generous with my information. But the thing is is that with Uranus, because it's the planet that rules unexpected developments, like we literally cannot predict the energy that Uranus brings, it could be anything, but we just know that it's in anything that rules Taurus. Usually that energy is concentrated in what your what Taurus brings across the board. So that's the things that we value, that's our businesses, that's our government, that's our earth. Those issues, those areas are going to be highlighted now that Uranus is retrograde. They have been, but it will be enhanced even more so now that it's retrograde and then when it goes direct because that's just the nature and the element of Uranus in a nutshell. So I will be doing a separate video on that. I know that's a, a mouthful and that's a lot to kind of process right now and it keeps you at the edge of your seat but I'm hoping to get this done for you guys sooner rather than later. But um, that happened on the 12th. Oh that's today actually. This is happening on the 12th where Uranus is going retrograde or is moving into retrograde motion so we're going to start seeing that energy getting kicked up. The one thing that I'm seeing as I'm pulling up this chart is this week, mark my words, literally mark my words, we are going to hear, we are going to see some things that were just like, what, mind blown, didn't see that coming. Why is this? Well, because Mercury just moved into the sign of Leo. And Mercury rules our communication. It's how we think, it's how we express ourselves, it's what we're saying, it's what the contracts that we're signing, it's details, it's all in the details. And when Mercury moves to the sign of Leo, it's like taking a parachute, that's the visual that I get, taking a parachute and having a ball on it and just knocking it up and down. I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but I did, like this is my experience back in elementary school. I don't know why, but in PE or gym class, they would take this ball and they would throw it onto the parachute and we would use our arms to shake the parachute and the ball would just bounce around. That is what we have in the cosmos currently right now. Holla at me if you can relate to that. Why did they have that activity? Was it an arm strengthening activity? And then they would make us throw the parachute up and then push it underneath our butts and we would all run under and then this there's, it would be this tent effect. I love that. That was my favorite. I felt so safe and I felt so connected to everyone and we all did it at the same time. So I don't know what that was. Maybe team building? I don't know. But that's the energy of what I'm seeing this week. It's like this very expressive, very movement, very like what is going on? Where is this ball going to bounce? Where is it headed? I don't know. Honestly, you just want to stay open and flexible as always with anything. Mercury has 
a, a tendency when it moves to the sign of Leo of being very, very expressive. It wants to be recognized, it wants to be seen, it wants to be validated, it wants to show off a little bit. So when we have Mercury moving to the sign of Leo and then we have Uranus going retrograde and then Mercury and Uranus squaring off with each other, basically what we're gonna have this week is some really interesting, shocking conversations. The words that came out that, like, that came during my meditation that are not from spirit but just like, I guess how my ancestors I guess were talking to me in that moment they were just like you're acting out of pocket like would not even predict this person or this thing to say what they said or for you to say what you said or maybe if you're normally a reserved person somehow some way you just have to shake it out you have to express yourself you have to get out there a part of this is standing your ground with certain things because that's something that a lot of us are learning with Pluto and Saturn retrograde with our boundaries and our limitations and structure and just being like nope or a hard yes or a hard no these are things that we're standing up for ourselves but for others I'm seeing this as okay I've been working on this I've been writing this I've been deliberating and going back and forth and now I am putting it out there for the world to see it and then the world observes it and takes it and then you go you know once that once you see who acknowledges it and accepts it, then when Mercury moves into Virgo, and when we, we enter into Virgo season, that's when we can start going into planning mode. But for right now, what it is that you wanna do is you wanna express yourself, you wanna shine, 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 you wanna put yourself out there as much as possible. Make sure that your energy feels good, that you're radiating positive vibes, and that's something that is that I'm seeing. I want you guys to mark the 14th. There is magic that is happening on the 14th, and it's because Venus, the planet that rules, oh, okay, I'm like, where are my notifications coming from? And it's on my iPad and my iPhone. But, okay, Venus is, it rules beauty and luxury and our investments and relationships and union. Venus is moving to a tight conjunction with the sun and it's going to be perfect on the 14th. Basically what a conjunction is is that Venus moves on top of the sun and the sun's light, it radiates perfectly off of Venus and bounces that light back down to here, back down to us here on earth. And this is when you see like a major positive development when it comes to relationships. This is a great day to get your hair done, your nails done to take care of yourself, um, to work on a creative project or a, pro a, a project that brings brilliance. Now interpret that how you will because everybody has different things. So let's say you're a public speaker. Well, the 14th, if you're in politics or if you're trying to sell something, the 14th is the day to do it. The other thing that I'm seeing is if you're trying to make a change when it comes to your beauty, when it comes to in your investments, the 14th is a great day to take initiative on that and to get that ball started. And again, this could be something totally unexpected. You might dye your hair hot pink, you might cut your hair short, you might put in long extensions, you might be attracted to something that you normally would not be attracted to, like a couch or a plant. I don't know. This is <laughs> maybe just me speaking from experience, but there's something about it that is visually just pulls you to it. Maybe it's something that usually tends to be something really bright, or you might see like gold, something gold, something sparkling, really drawing your attention this week. And that is definitely in the works because when Venus and the sun move through the sign of Leo and they conjunct like this, it's just like boom in your face. You know, didn't see that coming. It is what it is. So I say enjoy it. I don't see this as a negative thing. In fact, as I was looking at the cards for this entire week, of course, I pulled cards and I, you know, sat with my meditation in this. The energy is just so different. And I don't know if you guys can sense that in me as well, but this energy is way more lifted than it was in the last few weeks. Now, I know a lot of you guys were having like your best year ever, ever for 2019, but there's a lot of people that were struggling and it was because and predominantly because Saturn and Pluto are retrograde, Neptune is retrograde, Uranus is now retrograde, but it's just like this weird orb of energy, like this weird vortex of energy that we've all kind of been moving through. We're almost kind of closing some chapters and going through this major initiation is the word that just came to me. It's like this transformation that happened last year but being initiated into this next level this next realm of your life this next journey in your life and 
the growing pains that come with that. For some of you guys, you're continuing to close chapters, but a lot of you guys, you're starting these new journeys, this new life, and it's requiring a lot. It's taking a lot of your energy. So this week, I'm actually seeing this energy kind of lighten up and feel a little bit more softer, a little bit more supportive, and exciting in the way that we deserve it to be. So sometimes these shocking developments and shocking revelations come through, and we are encouraged by people like me, like spiritual spirituality people and our intuitives to be like, look, stay open, stay flexible. But really what we're saying, if you read between the lines, is like, the shit might hit the fan a little bit, so just be open to that, be prepared for this. For this week, I'm seeing an end, a total end to these shocking things that keep triggering you. And I feel intuitively, I really strongly feel that for a lot of us, we have evolved. These old things that have triggered us or these old things that have bothered us are now kind of put to rest. I'll wait. Okay, hopefully that's it. Okay, sorry, there's noise out in the background. So if you can hear that, my apologies. But yeah, basically what it is that I'm seeing is these old things that were triggering, triggering you and bringing out the worst in you, you know? It's almost embarrassing because you're like, I thought I evolved from this. I thought I was doing better than this, but yet I'm being triggered or this is really irritating me. This is really getting under my skin. But you know, the universe is interesting in how it works and it's it really is trying to evolve you. It's trying to shape you into a better person. It's trying to legit make you totally unbothered. Not because it's a facade or something that you're faking. It just truly doesn't bother you anymore because you're on the next level of peacefulness and contentment that this lower vibrational energy just doesn't hit you in the same way. So that's what I'm seeing at the start of this week is that this more evolved you is coming out so that if something does come in and you know with the parachute and bounce things around a little bit it doesn't shake you up in the same way but it almost is saying a strong goodbye to what has happened to these old habits these old patterns and for some of you guys i'm feeling like a total release and i don't know what has happened for you if it's maybe Uranus going retrograde and Jupiter now moving direct, but there's something about this that feels really light and that heaviness, that, that burden that you've been carrying feels like you've gone, you've been baptized, you've been cleansed new, cleansed fresh. Maybe you've been doing a lot of energy work. Maybe you've been following my advice. Maybe you've been working candle magic or whatever, but something here has totally shifted and totally changed. The thing that I'm seeing to cover us this week is the Knight of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. Now, when I'm seeing this, I'm seeing a person who is connected with their intuition, they're connected with their dreams, and they're manifesting. They're manifesting not out of desperation, but because they know that they're deserving, and that the time is right, and the time is now. And I'm seeing this as a perfect trine of energy, like a perfect, this is my ideal world, this is my I ideal vision, this is something that I deserved. And manifestation comes because we are at peace, and we, like everything within us is still because everything that we come out of has been kind of chaotic and crazy. I'm seeing this when it comes to love and creative projects, romance and attraction and beauty and self-love. So when I say love, I don't limit it to just romantic love. I mean love across the board. With the Queen of Cups, this is a woman who feels beautiful, who nurtures herself first and foremost, and her, fills her cup up so that it's able to be poured into the next. She has support around her. She doesn't feel alone. She doesn't feel isolated. She doesn't feel worn out and stretched thin. She feels recharged. She, she feels solid. She's emotionally in tune with herself. She's intuitive. She shares her gifts with others when she feels called to. She doesn't feel guilty. She doesn't. She has a lot of compassion. She has a lot of understanding. So these are things that it is that I'm seeing, and she's so gifted. She's highly gifted and she's sharing those gifts and shining them out so the rest of the world can see it. That is her gift. Who she is to her core is how God created her, how the divine created her, and she is sharing those gifts with the world. So that is what I'm seeing for this week for all of us, and it comes from a space of my cup is filled, so now that I'm filled, I can share that with you. This is creativity, this is money, this is love, this is romance. And the other thing that I want you guys to see and know is that as you're putting this out there, as you're called to do it, don't do it because you feel forced, but because you feel called to do it. It feels good to do it. As you do that, it literally comes back tenfold. I'm really seeing this 
number eight, but it's the eight knocked over to, on the side, so it's the infinity sign, and what it is that you put out there comes back to you it, like threefold, tenfold. It's just, it's good vibration, it's good energy, it's giving and receiving. And it's because you truly, it's not that you haven't deserved it before, but you're in a space right now where you're able to receive it. So it just flows into your life like a nice little trine. Probably saying that, because I'm looking at the chart, I'm like, is there a trine? Well, Venus is moving out of a trine with Jupiter. Jupiter is now direct, so that could open the floodgate. Jupiter is now, um, uh, moving through, well has been moving to the side of Sagittarius so again it's opening our perspective up in a big way but kind of gradually but step by step and the other thing that I'm seeing is the fact that Neptune retrograde moving to the sign of Pisces is trying the North Node the North Node is where it is that we are pulled to go to as a collective what we're striving to go to it has been moving through the sign of cancer and has been sitting in the sign of cancer that's connecting to this is where I belong this is why you guys keep hearing me say this is where I belong. Where do I belong? Home is where the heart is. And those those things where it's like family and healing with the family and healing within your heart and healing your past, healing your roots in order to help what you're putting out there to manifest in a bigger and better way that's going to be part of your legacy that you're going to then give on to your children if you decide to give on to your children or give on to your communities. But it's going to be the impression that it is that you leave on this world. When Neptune is retrograde and moving through Pisces, Neptune is again this idealization of how good can this get and this connection to this higher compassion, this higher sense of love, this higher sense of service. And that's what I'm seeing for so many of us if you're being authentic about it, if you're being honest about it, and if you're giving from your heart, it is, you're finding your space where it is that you belong, you're finding the people that is that you belong with, your tribe, your community, your, your soulmate, your twin flame, your life partner, whatever it is that you're trying to call in, and also ultimate healing on all the levels, mind, body, soul, spirit. So it's just this week is truly magical. I'm seeing a lot of love, a lot of romance. It comes in easy, it comes in effortless. The same people that have been so tightly bound and so restricted and restrained, it's like, again, it's like this cathartic energy came through and cleansed them and birthed them new, and that's what we're seeing this week, and that's freaking beautiful, and we all deserve it, like some really good vibes. And if you don't see that around the people, that you're with, then it's time to bring that energy in for yourself using oils, intention oils. I was just talking to a friend last night when she was saying that she uses my, my love spell oil, not to attract love all the time, but because it makes her feel, you know, so it, gives, it gives her so much self-love, it gives her so much um, value, like self-value, and it reminds her of, her of how important she is and how important her gifts are, and it just shines from her. Whenever she puts it on, she may not be you know, dressed to the nines, she may not you have her hair done or whatever, but she people stop and they say, you know, you're so beautiful, and she's like, really? And it's every time she wears my oil, and that's the intention behind it. That's the, why I created that oil, is it's not physical beauty all the time, even though that happens, of course. It's your energy, your energy makes you stand out. And whether you're trying to attract love or whether you're trying to be the epitome of love, it's just an energy and essence that separates you from others, that makes you stand out in a way that is gentle and striking. That is the intention behind that oil. So that's ultimately, the reason why I mention that is because that's ultimately the energy that I'm seeing for this week ahead, and it's really, truly beautiful. Now, I know I'm saying a lot, I'm, I'm being very wordy right now, but there's so much to talk about, and it's very exciting. So let's go ahead and talk about Monday through Wednesday, and what it is that I'm seeing for those days. Okay, my loves, so what I'm seeing for Monday through Wednesday is really, really interesting. For some reason, I just heard the word, word highly irritating. Not to say that Monday through Wednesday is going to be highly irritating. I actually see you intuitively, again, you've evolved, like you're different. Like you have to be different. Your energy has to be different. But it's a person who has decided that anything that is highly irritating towards me literally does not serve a place and does not have a place and should not hold a place in my life, so I release it. This has come to you through these shocking revelations that have happened up until this point that have been a lot. There has been a lot of them, left and right, and again, it's the things that bother you, it's the things that irritate you. Well, Monday through Wednesday, there's something about this that the things that would normally irritate you or the things that would normally bother you, they won't even ruffle your feathers. When things come up and surprise you, it's just an it's almost like an opportunity for some for some, for a lot of you guys. 
end, you having that mindset and not getting bothered by literally remaining unbothered because intuitively you've learned and intuitively you've connected to yourself and you're listening to your internal guidance of, okay, I release this. I'm not going to carry this burden anymore. I'm putting this weight down. This is not for me to carry. That is when you make decisions. You are able to have the space, the freedom to initiate new beginning, the new journey. It's like a person who has come to a crossroad and then they see this and at that crossroad, there was like a like a fork in the roll a fork in the road and a troll that protects that and guards that and that troll says to you look if you're going to go this way you cannot carry that that you know crate behind you you're going to have to lighten the load a little bit if you go this way you can carry that crate with you but that road is really rocky and the outcome is going to leave you lead you to up and over a cliff what are you going to decide to do seems like a riddle but intuitively you know the answer to it so you decide, look, I'm not gonna carry this burden with me because I don't want to, and I don't wanna go down that road because we've been there, done that, and I don't want my end result to be me going off the edge of a cliff. Like, I know that this is, this. if I choose this route and if I unburden myself, then not only will I experience better for myself, but I'm going into the promised land. So that's what it is that I'm seeing for you guys. It's like a choice that you make initiated by what you have let go of and it seems, oh, and then I look at the clock, it's 11, 11 a.m., like legit. But it's a choice that is that you've made that have been circumstances that have brought you here over time and you're making the right decision and the right, the right, the right time with the right opportunity, with the right growth and the ability to expand because you're no longer carrying the same shit that it is that you brought here in this moment. I hope that that makes sense, but that's what it is that I'm seeing. And for some of you guys, you're about to open up to a lot of opportunity. Remember how we saw the um, Queen of Cups and the Knight of Cups here? It's because there's some opportunities that are coming in. They're just flowing in like water, like ocean waves. They're just coming in like a river. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That I see this as a good thing. So because these opportunities are coming in and because you're not, your hands aren't full, you can actually fill your cup up and you have the freedom to fill your cup up and it feels good, it feels exciting, it's giving you life again. So this is a really interesting week and that's what I'm seeing for Monday through Wednesday. The cards that I have in front of me are the Tower reversed, the Ten of Wands reversed, and the High Priestess reversed. And all of these I vibe with. Now let's go ahead and move on Wednesday through Friday. Hmm. Wednesday through Friday, this is interesting because again, I'm seeing you pulling in your power. We are on the next level. What happened this weekend for you? Like, what was it? Wow, I know what I've been working on, but I'm wondering what you guys have been working on because energy is totally shifted, totally changed, and it's just, it's different now. Basically, what I'm seeing is discernment. This is not a warning, this is confirmation for what you have been working on, what you have been experiencing, and where you're at currently in your life. I just feel like, again, this is more evolved. This is a higher evolved you. I see you calling the shots. I see anything that comes through, even if it seems like it's unlucky, even if it seems like it's bad, you just can somehow sort, sort through it and be like, okay, that's a lie or that's a truth or this is a yes that's a no or something's not right with this and i don't even need to look into that it's just an instant no and that's what it is i'm seeing i'm seeing you kind of like you don't even need to take the same amount of time to examine something to be like no like that's not right or that's not for me it's a different energy that is really calling you into your personal power and that's what it is i'm seeing i'm seeing you having the key i'm seeing you have the power and your power is coming through your discernment. Your power is coming through your ability to examine. This is coming through your creativity. It's coming through your love life. It's coming through your ability to express yourself. It's your hobbies, the things that you enjoy to do. It's what it is that you're creating and what it is that you have already created. Now, there's examination. There's like looking at things under a microscope and that's with the Queen of Swords. And this is because anything that comes across her table in order or across her desk as a magician, she looks at it, she she examines it. And then she says, okay, this is a yes, and she signs off on it, this is a no. Now, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling with the Wheel of Fortune reversed is this is like an examination, the Queen of Swords examining, okay, this is why 
we are stuck in this cycle or this is why things aren't moving here or this needs to be tweaked and this needs to be changed. It's almost like engineer energy. It's like a person who can pay attention to details, very Virgo, very Capricorn, and see the problem and then quickly work to fix it because she has learned through her experiences. Because the Queen of Cups is covering all of us now, I don't see this as a heavy energy, like emotionally heavy, heavy energy. I just see this as a person who is very focused and very attention to, de uh, attention to detail, analyzing in a way that gives you back your personal power. This is creating more ease in your life, more power in your life. It's giving you control of your life. It's these tiny nuances, these tiny annoying things that you've already dealt with before, so you now you know you know how to deal with them in the future and it helps things to move forward in a more fluid way that you are projecting for the future. It's like, okay, if we do this this way, our growth is projected to hit these numbers at this point. That's how specific this is. It's like facts only. So that's what I'm seeing Wednesday through Friday is this very much hyper focus, which makes a lot of sense too because on the on the 15th, we have the full moon in Aquarius. And this is going to be drawing in your personal power. This is doing things differently. This is seeing the bigger picture, but then also somehow creating a new plan in order to move things forward in a way that you probably haven't been able to experience up until this point, but because of your lessons and because of what how you have grown and what you've initiated in the past, you're able to do things differently now that Jupiter is direct and you're more open to elements, you're more open to being flexible even as Uranus is retrograde because you're not trying to you know, stay in this locked in way. Uranus retrograde is totally about having freedom for yourself and being able to fly free and to not be limited by people, places, things, situations, your jobs, nothing. Nothing is going to limit you. So what I'm seeing is at around the 15th and the, the second portion of this week, if you guys see any movement down here, it is Franklin who's sitting on my lap and today is his birthday, by the way, my little Leo baby, he's so cute. But yeah, I just am seeing this, um, you know, creation, this project and breaking free and getting rid of like squashing out the, whatever it is that's stopping this wheel from turning upright for you, it's your discernment and your attention to detail and you being like, uh-uh, or yes, or I'm signing off on this, that's going to help things to move move them forward. The cards that are covering us for Wednesday through Friday are Mer um, Mercury ruled, the Magician, the Wheel of Fortune reversed, and the Queen of Swords. And I have been so Queen of Swords lately. Usually I'm Queen of Pentacles, but I've been channeling the Queen of Swords and I've been working with her energy a lot and it's been very beneficial to me. Now let's go ahead and move on to Friday through Sunday. Friday through Sunday, I am seeing and feeling a different perspective, seeing things in a different light. On the 18th, Mars ruling our drive, our ambition, our fire, our passion, our ability to have vitality, our ability to, our will, our desire, our action, our enthusiasm is moving through the sign of Virgo. Virgo, I'm a Virgo, so I know this. Virgo brings an energy again where it's very head down, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm working on, this needs to be tweaked, it's all about making things perfect. Virgo is ruled by Mercury, Mercury connects to our perspective, but I'm seeing, what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is a change in our perspective, a change in how we see things. Now that Jupiter is direct and Jupiter is moving to the sign of Sagittarius, our vision needs to be wider. Our horizon needs to be broadened. There is a whole world out there. There is so much for you to discover. Oh my gosh. There's so much for you to discover. Maybe not out there. For some of you guys, you don't want to travel. Some of you guys, you're internally traveling, spiritually traveling. Others, you actually are doing some travel. So what I'm seeing is this cloudiness that can come through that is your it's like a perspective shift, a perspective change. How have I seen the world? How have I seen myself? How have how has my relationship with the divine been? How is my relationship with the divine within myself been? I'm looking at that, I'm examining that, and it's up to me to decide how I can tweak that and change that so that I can be enlightened because I don't want to live in a box. So what it is that I'm seeing is six of swords, I'm seeing the high, um, the hanged man reversed, and I'm seeing four of cups. And it's 
interesting to me because there is the potential for this to come through from another person. That's what it is that I'm seeing. Why? Because the Four of Cups here, reversed, shows re-interest in something. And I'm seeing, okay, I thought we were moving forward, but we might be returning back. It's a mindset. It's emotion. It's something that we thought, you know, we were kind of left in limbo. We thought we would never see progress with this. But somehow, there's a revisiting of energy. There's a revisiting of interest. There's a revisiting of... I care about you and I'm also seeing Mercury ruling the mind, squaring off with Uranus, now retrograde, and that brings in surprises on the 16th. So I'm seeing that energy still carrying over into the weekend. It's like, I'm going to revisit this thought, I'm going to revisit this relationship, I'm going to revisit this lifestyle, this project, this movement. I've been kind of like stuck in this limbo phase, but now I'm kind of taking myself down because I had this awakening, I had this realization, somehow I know things are different now, Sometimes, somehow I'm different and I'm going to do things differently. This is something that I want, this is something that I'm manifesting, and I'm going to do things differently. I just want you guys to remember to connect with your friends. There's a connection to friends here. I want you guys to connect with your friends, connect with your communities, connect with your the internet, connect with your social media to make sure that what's going on around you and the energy that you're seeing is something that is positive, especially what's going on in the world as of late. Because it can drain you, it can choose, it can kind of make you choose a decision that you normally wouldn't do because it brings your energy down. So we want to make sure that your energy is still positive and that you're staying in a, a higher vibration just make sure that what you're hearing and seeing is something that is building you up pay attention to what it is that you're listening to the company that you keep and the words that is that you're saying to yourself so I don't know I'm just seeing you know protecting your mental health protecting your your internal and then also for some of you guys it's fresh energy it's going out and seeing the world and then for others it's going out and seeing the world within yourself and reconnecting back to the divine through your practices so that's what I'm seeing for the weekend so there's the potential for some of you to I don't want to say isolate but maybe that's there because if you're doing spiritual seeking then that makes a lot of sense for you to spend time by yourself maybe for others you're going to a church you're going to a group and you're not isolating yourself but you're you're separating from one friend's circle to go to the next friend's circle because it's for your, the betterment of your spiritual self. It's a new community, a new tribe. Maybe you're gonna start studying astrology or studying tarot and diving into that a little deeper. And that's something that you've been kind of stuck on and now you're taking it more seriously. The, the potential is so open here. It's very Jupiter energy. It's very ninth house energy where it's travel, expansion, the mind, college, education, knowledge, your perspective on things, the world, your connection to the world, your role in the world, those types of things. Those are things that are being brought here where it comes to your perspective. Now let's talk about our strengths and our weaknesses, starting with our strengths, what's working for us this week. So with our strengths, the word brotherhood is coming through. <laughs> and I see this as very masculine energy. What is working for us is masculine totally because the emperor here the Ten of Cups reversed, and the Page of Swords reversed. What's working for us is, I think that our, our we're, we've stepped into our masculine energy presence. So maybe this is a father figure that's stepping into your life right now. Maybe you're spending more time with a masculine presence within your life. But maybe as a man, you are surrounded by a brotherhood. You're surrounded by a fraternity. As a woman, you could have the same energy where you're with your brothers or with um, masculine, like a masculine group, your uncles, you know, your friends, you have a lot of male friends. I personally have a lot of male friends, um, but I'm seeing a lot of, you know, people that ground you, pe people that bring you here on earth and that center you. Maybe it's not necessarily men, maybe it's women who are very masculine energy, who have very strong presence, that are the backbone of the family or the backbone of their organization or leaders within their community that are coming in as very solid. They're all about action. They're action oriented. They're all about that plan. They're all about connecting, connecting and bonding in a way that brings strength and stability. That's what it is that I'm seeing. I'm seeing this chitter chatter. You're canceling that out. It's this, it could be chitter chatter in your own head. 
that you totally are just like, I'm not doing this, you know, mind worrying thing. I'm not going to worry anymore. I'm not going to take on this burden. I'm going to connect with others who are informed that are going to create and bond with me the structure that is that we need in order to create what it is that we ultimately see for ourselves, what it is that we're ultimately creating. The Page of Swords is very mind oriented, it's very mental. It can be overthinking, overdoing, over saying, over talking, over examining, over analyzing. It could be gossip, it could be spying on things, looking into things too much, being too curious. So this shows me that in order for you to be more solid, in order for you to have more energy and more personal power, you can't be dealing with this lower vibrational energy and what's working for you is that you're putting a stop to it. You're ending that. And that is calling in your energy again. I think that even with your friends and with the people that you talk to, the people that you exchange thoughts with, you are stepping into a space where there is more power, there is more strength and more again like brotherhood like a, a um like we're loyal to each other we're i don't say committed to each other but our loyalties run deep so it's you making making bonds with people that aren't in this lower energy vibration and you canceling that out you squashing it out and that's what's going to call in your personal power once again we have so many power power cards this this week for us so you're taking a negative thing and you're turning it into a positive. Things that would normally be negative or things that would be, again, annoying to you or easily irritating to you, you've surpassed it. And that's what's working for you. Now let's, now let's look to see what's working against, against you. Okay, working against you for this week, I do still feel a need to be flexible. Why? Well, because this is what's working against us. The Four of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles, and the Nine of Cups. Now, some of you guys are like, Jess, how can the Nine of Cups be a negative thing? How could it be a bad thing? Well, because if you study the tarot, which we're doing that in my school, Sacred Circle Tarot School, which will be reopening soon once again, but the Nine of Cups, there's no such thing as a positive or negative card. And depending on the question, what is it you're asking, asking, that's the answer that the cards are giving you. That's the answer that Spirit is giving you. Well, what's working against us is the Nine of Cups is this like, I'm fine here status quo. I don't need anything more. I am good right here. And the Four of Pentacles confirms this even further because the Four of Pentacles is like, mm, I'm not moving. This is what it is. I'm happy. I'm content. I don't want anything more. I don't want to take on anything more. Can I tell you how open you need to be with being a, a, um, open to adjustment, open to being flexible, opening to a new thought? You have worked really hard to create your own stability. You have worked to create your what is valuable to you, what is important to you, and it is very stubborn. It's very Taurus-like energy where it's like, okay, this is what I've accumulated, this is my worth, this is what I love, this is what I have for myself, so I'm gonna hold on to it. The reality is, is that some things that are given to us that are our survival skills or that are given to us as gifts from the universe at one point are going to be the same things that anchor us in a bad way. And you don't want to carry the same shit, the same mindset, the same baggage. Remember the met the metaphor that I used at the beginning of this video where I was just like, okay, we're going to make a cross. We're going to make a, a decision. We're at the crossroads and that troll is asking you, look, if you go this way, you have to leave this baggage behind. Are you going to hold on and try and juggle everything? The reality is that you can't. Something has to be let go of. I know that you might be happy with it, but be open to being flexible. Be open to trying something new so that you can experience something new. And your perspective is shifting here. You're totally changing just by seeing things in a totally different light. So that's what it is that I'm seeing. I'm seeing that for some of you guys, the word generational curses are still some things that you're putting to rest and you're still letting, letting them go. And that's all well and good, but a generational curse or a burden that is given from generation to generation to generation is something that is really hard to break. And for some of you guys, you are so stubborn that you will not, you know, leave things, leave things. Like you will be like, this is how I am. Take it or leave it. It's like, all right, bitch, well, I'm leaving. Bye. You know what I mean? Like part of my French, but for real, it's like, take it or leave it. I'm out. If a person or people around you or the world is evolving and shifting, then you need to catch up. You being stubborn is going to be the cross that brings you down. But that's a, a choice and decision that is that you make. 
What contracts are you signing yourself to knowing fully well that you don't deserve, you don't, you don't need to be there anymore? What things are you saying yes to that you shouldn't be saying yes to? What things are you affirming that you need to stop affirming because that's creating your reality? You might be your own curse. You might be your own worst enemy because you keep allowing certain stuff. You keep, uh, you keep confirming it. You keep co-signing it and allowing it into your life. The rest of us are evolving. The rest of us are moving forward. We're not the same hardened, calloused trolls that we once were. I was a troll. <laughs> I really spent some time evolving, but I definitely had troll moments. We don't have to talk about them here, but just but best believe that I'm a human too and I've been there, done that. But I too have evolved, <laughs> sip tea. So basically what is it I'm seeing that's working against us is just being too stubborn, too set in your ways. But that is so easy to break free. Well, it's not easy to break free from, depending on how stubborn you are. And if you're a Taurus, you already know. Or if you're a Capricorn, you already know. Even Aquarius, you're so set in your ways. You'll be like the first one to be like, oh, I'm free as a bird. Are you? are you so anyways that's what it is i'm seeing for this week ahead honestly you guys it's been such a pleasure to talk with you this week i have so many videos that are coming in store for you from energy reads to talking about the full moon in aquarius i'm gonna get this video up for you and edit it as fast as i can and then i'm gonna move on to the next one because i have a lot of energy and i just I, things feel different now and it's because we deserve it so make sure that you're subscribed to this youtube channel make sure you're sharing it with your friends and your family leave your comments down below because i am reading all of them if not all of them then a good portion of them and i've been really really good lately with responding to them and until then i'll see you in my next video bye